Hello everyone, this is John Buck. Uh, in this video, Continuous Time Linear Systems video, we're going to talk about linear time invariant systems, convolution, and the impulse response. Right? Linear time invariant systems have this remarkable property that if I know the response to just one input, I can find the response to any input. Right? And what we know is that if, if I take a linear time invariant system and I have the input as an impulse, <coughs> that when I have an, a, an impulse for the input like this, the output we call the impulse response is a special case, so it gets its own name, H of T. For an LTI system, this is enough information from this one particular special input to tell me how any input, uh, how the system will respond to any input. And so that's a remarkable property. And we do this through the convolution integral, which is what I'm going to, in this video, I'm going to uh, show you where that integral comes from and, and why that works. And then in the following video, I'll do an example of, of how we can evaluate the convolution integral for some simple signals uh, that we can sketch the, the signals and H of T for. Uh, but the main idea behind this is that we, we can build any input X of T uh, not just this special case with delta of t going in, but for any input, uh, we can build it out of delta of t's and through a combination of shifting, scaling, and summing, or, or superposition. And so we can do the same shift, scale, and superposition of copies of h of t to get the output. So to see how that works, let's think about a couple of simple cases. If I have an LTI system that looks like this, and then my next step is to put in a scaled version, maybe a scaled and delayed version, by some amount v of, 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 of uh, delta of t, so a times that. Then the output, if this was my new input, my output, y of t, would be equal to a times h of t t minus v, right? I'd have the same delay applied to the output as the input because it's time invariant and the scaling property says I scale these. And then if I add two of these, if my new input, say we're, uh, maybe we'll say a times delta of t minus 2, to put actual numbers on it, and b times delta of t minus 7, then we know from linearity and time invariant properties that I would shift h of t the same way, scale it the same way, and then add the two of them from the superposition property. So my output would be a times h of t minus 2 plus b times h of t minus 7. And if I went even further, I said, well, what if my new input x of t was an infinite sum? Not just a sum of two things, but say I went some over some infinite set of k's, a sub k, delta of t minus k. Well, well, pause for a minute and think about what you think the output would be. Okay, now that you're back, we'd see that output would be the same. We could build it up one piece at a time. We'd say, well, for each, uh, each delta of t minus k would become an h of t minus k due to the time invariance. Scaling says we'd scale them all by the same constants. And then superposition says we'd add them all up. So if we took it one step further, we'd say, well, what, what if rather than a discrete sum, I had an infinite sum of things that were infinitely close together, which is an integral. And I'd say, I have all these delayed impulses at every possible delay, tau, from minus infinity to plus infinity, and I'll scale each of them by x of tau. Well, if I did that, my output, y of t, would be the same integral, right? That integral is just like a sum, only more so. So a superposition would be the same thing. I'd have x of tau scaling. These would each become h of t minus tau, d tau, right? And on this side, we say, well, what's this integral? The sifting property just tells us. We saw the sifting property when we first saw the impulses that this is x of t. I'm um, basically for every possible infinite shift tau, I'm putting a little impulse there whose height was x of tau, right? And so I scaled by x of tau to build up my signal. So I'm building it up one impulse at a time. It's just there's an infinitely uncountable set of them, but it's the same basic story that I, that I can build this up this way. Okay, and so that 
integral on the right hand side is is very important so let's just sort of summarize the main result from this video is if or maybe for an LTI system with impulse response H of T the output for any input can be computed with the convolution sum. I'm sorry, the convolution integral, which ha takes the form that the output y of t is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, h x of tau times h of t minus tau. So again, this is our convolution integral. It's important enough that I don't often draw red boxes, but I'll draw a red box around this one today. And so that's all for this video. Uh, I'll, I'll do a follow-on video that shows an example of how we interpret this integral graphically and how we can compute these integrals uh, from, from signals that are shown in pictures or simple equations. Okay, that's all for this video. See you next time.